Greetings from Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. And this is the story of the parachute jump. And the short version is, it's a celebration of Queens. This is an item from the 1939 World's Fair that was intended to either go to Brooklyn or New Jersey. And now it stands here in 2021 because over the long haul, it just costs too much to take down. And now here's the longer version if you want the specifics. The parachute jump uh, is an amusement park ride and landmark in New York City. It's part of the Steeplechase Plaza near the R&B Carousel. It is 250 feet tall. In 1939, it was part of the New York World's Fair in Flushing Meadows Park. It was the tallest structure in the fair. In 1941, after the World's Fair, it was moved to its current location in the Steeplechase Amusement Park area of Coney Island. And it had operations until the 1960s. And there are specifics about when it closed and when it was still in operation. Parachute Jump has been renovated several times since the 1990s stability and for aesthetic reasons. In the 2000s, it was restored and fitted with a lighting system. Lights were activated in 2006, replaced a subsequent project in 2013. Steeplechase Park, a New York City designated landmark, has been listed as a National Register of Historic Places. Now we still have some more information to go. Again, this is the long version of the parachute jump. The frame has 8,000 lights. The parachute jump is 250 feet tall. And again, it's from 1939. It is 262 feet tall, but it was topped with a 12 foot flagpole because people did not want this structure to be shorter than the image that was representing uh, Russia at the time in Queens. Now back to this being a financial situation. It has resided because it's cheaper to keep it maintained than it is to take it down. But it was not a profitable ride in its heyday. Each parachute required three cable operators. And so it was a draw for the park, but itself, um, it didn't make money initially. Okay, moving on. Because of its shape, it is referred to as the Eiffel Tower of Brooklyn. And keep in mind, this is the shape that it had when it was in the World's Fair of Queens. So it can also be recalled as the uh, Eiffel Tower of Queens. Moving on. Another jump a more, uh, reportedly designed by Strong was installed in France in 1937. So this, when it came to be, did have some world recognition. And again, it was part of the World's Fair of 1939 before it came to Coney Island, Brooklyn. Let's see, construction cost about $99,000. The jump opened in May 27th of 1939. So if you wanna come out here for a commemorative day to be in Brooklyn, that would be May 27th of 1939. Uh, each ride cost about 40 cents. The top took about a minute to rise to, and then the drop took about 10 to 20 seconds. One of the most spectacular features of the amusement park area, uh, and it was referred to, similar to that in which armies of the world used in early stages of training for actual parachute jumping, but it was not the most popular ride at the World's Fair. Billy Rose's stage show actually drew more people. The parachute jump reopened in June of 1940 and a couple was married on the parachute jump in the first ever parachute ceremony. A half a million guests 
had ridden the jump rope, uh, ridden the parachute jump tower. It was decided in October of 1940 that the parachute jump would be sent to Coney Island as a part of Steeplechase Park. It was purchased for $150,000. The jump reopened in May of 1941 as part of Steeplechase Park's single admission fare, which was 25 cents at the time. During World War II, uh, during the military blackout, the jump parachute jump stayed lit to, save, uh, to serve as a navigational beacon. Half a million riders rode during the operational season. Coney Island's popularity, though, it receded when the World's Fair started again in 1964. So people were leaving Coney Island to go back to where the parachute jump was from, Queens. On September 20th, 1964, Steeplechase Park closed for the very last time. And being that this was part of Steeplechase Park, many people cite that as the last time that anyone had dropped from the parachute jump. Although there are records that say that the uh, jump was turned on for specific events and maybe 1968 was the last year, but a lot of people are saying that 1964 would be the last year of operation because that is when the steeplechase park closed. Now after that, it was designed that this area would be changed over to a convention center area and an entertainment area and that the parachute jump would be sold for scrap metal um, someone referred to it after that as potentially being referred to as the world's largest bird feeding station the last documented incident on the ride was may 30th of 1968 again the park closed earlier than that, but some people are saying that it was turned on at different points afterwards. In 1966, the Landmark Preservation Commission wanted to landmark the site, but in 1968, the um, acquired the site. Who, who acquired the site? The city acquired the site for four million dollars. Four million dollars, and the New York City Parks controlled the jump. Uh, the sale of the jump was set in 1971 as an auction, but guess what? Nobody wanted it. And the New York City Parks Department at that point had said, if no one wants it, we are going to demolish it. Um, but there was absolutely no financial way to demolish something of this height. So they set up proposals of what to do with the site. And there was an installation idea to install a light show as the tower could be seen for up to 30 miles. The National Registry of Historic Places did place the jump uh, in 1980. The city questioned the tower's safety in 1982 and it cost $1 million to restore the jump to operating condition. $300,000 to demolish and only $10,000 to maintain. So that's how, it's sort of the story of the parachute jump. It's actually cheaper to keep it here than it is to tear it down because it's so tall and it's actually cheaper to just keep it here and paint it than it is to remove it because of the structure size. On May 23rd of 1989, the LPZ restored the city landmark started to the parachute jump. In 1991, it cost $800,000 to prevent the jump from collapse. Again, so much money was meant, uh, spent to keep the parachute jump from collapsing, being uh, climbed on. That money possibly could have been spent in many other areas of Brooklyn, but Again, that's, the, that's what I said earlier. The story of this is it costs too much to restore and it costs too much to tear it down. Uh, in the New York City Economic Development Corporation, NYEDC, assumed responsibility for the tower in 2000. 
The plan renovation at that point would have cost $20 million. In 2002, they started renovating the parachute jump for $5 million. And then there was a lighting contract in 2004 to install some lights. The first night that the light show was held was on July 7th of 2006. Now, this is a popular destination for 4th of July for the fireworks. In 2008, anti-climbing devices were installed and we're almost at the wrap. We're going to talk about some of the lights right now. It was completed in 2013 that there are 8 thousand lights and the tower was lit up for the first time on new year's eve for the ball drop at the end of 2014. now if you come here on new year's eve you will see a beautiful light display alongside of the atlantic ocean and there's a countdown at the parachute jump uh, which is very close to the ford theater now i've seen the parachute jump when i was over at the Verrazano Bridge connecting Brooklyn to Staten Island. I've been able to see the parachute jump at the tail end tip of the borough of Queens at the end of the Rockaway Peninsula in Breezy Park. But I always wondered, what part of Coney Island is that? Is it Luna Park? Is it Dino's Wonder Wheel? Um, and so I, I did some research and it's a long story. So I wanted to just share as much of it as I could with you. Bottom line is it celebrates New York City. The World's Fair 1939, it was intended to come to Brooklyn after the World's Fair closed. So it celebrates Queens, it celebrates the vibrancy of New York. Uh, as during military times, during the Great Depression, it was lit up as a beacon of hope and people turn in the new year alongside of the parachute jump. Although they don't jump off it, um, and they are still inspired and it is a gathering point for New Yorkers, especially at a cold time of year like New Year's Eve when people don't want to go outside. And that's a little bit of history from the uh, Regalman Boardwalk of Coney Island, Brooklyn. I love New York. Till next time, keep exploring.